Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Quarantined in California. Yeah. Well, I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, this was not the episode that was supposed to air today. Due to a certain beer pathogen crisis that I'm definitely not afraid of, I had to reschedule a little bit. So pour a shot of your finest hand sanitizer and let's toast to inevitability. Cheers. I call it a quarantini. Well, Berger Pancro 400 finally came to 35 and 120 formats. And by finally, I mean in 2017. A much, much simpler time for sure. But yeah, I'm a little late to the game, so I wanted to give it a go and see what it could do. I've been shooting a lot more black and white this year, which, now that I think about it, may be correlated to the infamous Kodak price jump. Anyway, since I've been shooting black and white more, I figured I'd try out some of the more popular stocks and see if there are any that are worthy. Recently, I decided to test out Berger Pancro 400 and review it, so anyone watching this at 4am quarantined in their room can make a more informed decision going forward. Pancro 400 is a black and white film that Berger claims produces a wide latitude image, and if you know anything about me, I'm all about latitude. In fact, in high school I was even voted most likely to latitude. This film is actually the only film that Berger produces nowadays that isn't a self-described darkroom film. So either they've perfected the film entirely or they're on the losing side of some film photography turf war with Ilford. Anyway, a while ago I decided the perfect opportunity to test Pancro 400 would be an upcoming camping trip in the desert with my brother and his three douchebag roommates who will probably try to kick my ass if they see this. So I loaded up the Forerunner with only the essentials and headed out. On this camping trip, fortunately, I did not bring my green tent. You know the one I'm talking about. The one that looks like what throw up looks like. Not that it would really matter because I'm shooting black and white anyway, but f that tent. Pancro stands for Panchromatic, which is a type of black and white film that actually describes most of the black and white films on the market today. Panchromatic black and white film, in a general sense, can see a wider array of the visible light spectrum, so it renders your image closer to real life. But what is real anyway? Now you might be like, isn't that a good thing? Don't we want our photos to look like real life? The truth is, Real life sucks. So alternatively, you can shoot an orthochromatic black and white film, which is not sensitive to red light, like Ilford's new orthochromatic 80 ISO film. But we're not gonna dive into any of that today. I just thought it was important to highlight orthochromatic and panchromatic and their differences. So Berger Pancro 400 is a two emulsion film, one emulsion being silver iodide and the other being silver bromide, which I can only assume is an awesome combination, like drinking 151 and playing with fireworks. In reality, the two emulsion combo creates a very wide latitude for the film, almost as wide as your mom. So what camera did I shoot? You're probably dying from this virus to know. I shot with my thickest camera, thick with two C's, the Pentax 6x7. Furthermore, I decided to shoot the two rolls of Pancro 400 at box speed. Brendan, have you ever even been to a gym?
Initially, one thing that I didn't like about this film was the end of the roll tape. It's the lick it kind, not the sticky peel apart kind, which is far superior. If you disagree, then I think I need to physically fight you. Get out of my shot. <laughs> oh damn, you can play with the uh, lighting too. Oh, you can play with these nuts. Now, I didn't shoot any Pancro 400 in 35mm, but I can imagine it's all pretty similar. Apparently the film base is different between 35 and 120, but I can't imagine that that makes a huge difference in the final outcome of the image. In fact, Berger Pancro 400 can be obtained in a wide variety of formats, including 35, 120, and of course, large format, and even 20x24 20 ultra large format, if you hate yourself and shoot that. Good morning, Krusty Crew. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, beautiful. So you may be looking at this shot and think, what the hell happened here? That's sweet. You must be new around here. My Pentax 6x7 has a spacing issue, so it only gets about nine and a half shots. I sometimes show the last shot anyway, even if it's f***ed up, like that tattoo on my shoulder. Anyway, I definitely have to agree with the wide latitude claim by Berger. There's certainly a healthy amount of information in the highlights and the shadows. In fact, the latitude was so expansive that when I scanned the image, I got a very flat look. So I had to go in and season the contrast to taste in Lightroom. Typically I shoot my black and white film one stop underexposed to get more contrast and darker shadows. That might be something I try in the future, but I imagine with Pancro's wide latitude, one stop may not really make a difference. In fact, what I'll probably do in the future is push the film two stops to get more contrast. My main black and white film is Ilford HP5, but I actually feel like Pancro lends a unique look to the image with its wide latitude. Admittedly though, I kind of felt like the film rendered some images with a little bit of like dullness. It's kind of hard for me to explain exactly what I mean, so I'm not going to bother with it. It's probably nothing. They're both panchromatic films, but honestly, I feel like Pancro delivered more information onto the negative than what I typically get with HP5. It's a minute difference, and frankly, I could just be imagining it. Honestly, they're both amazing films, and you can't go wrong with either, not that it's even a competition. In the end, it was a fun trip, and it was cool to explore a new film. I may actually end up using Pancro 400 from time to time in the future, and I'd be really excited to test the flatness of the film with some night photography. So yeah, that's it. Until next time, stay healthy, practice social distancing, stop making out with park benches, and remember to wash your hands, and may the odds be ever in your favor. I will see you all later out in the apocalyptic wasteland in a few months.